Today, me and Mike is gonna expose the five biggest lies about credit repair. So sit back, relax, grab a pen, get some paper, get something to drink, cause we gonna get straight into it. Man, Mike, after sitting with these attorneys today, whoo -wee, man, there's a lot of lies. Their perspective of credit repair is totally different than our perspective of what we learned and all the information. And we're going to talk about some of the things so it can actually help you when it comes to fixing your credit. And Mike, what's the first thing? Oh, man. So the first thing is that the credit bureaus uh -huh. actually want to help you. So when we sat with the attorneys, um, we realized that when we pull the credit reports, we're supposed to be looking for certain things. But when you guys do it, the, the, the credit bureau say something like, hey man, you might sound like a credit repair company. That, and, they'll, and they'll give you a little verbiage at the bottom. They'll, send, say, you that, they'll send you that letter. Yep. And then when, when you read that letter, it says, the verb, you're talking about the verbiage when they... No, nah, I'm talking about when they say, um, you can do it yourself. Yep. Sign up for right here. Yeah, to okay. Experian yeah. account, mm -hmm. but and then they say it's free. Mm -hmm. So when they say it's a free Experian account, um, when I hear it and I see it, I'm like, why would somebody try to help me when they're the person who is actively hurting me? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. If I send a letter in and you say validate, 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 hold on, use my service to fix the problem that I created. So that is the number one problem. Uh, if you ask me, uh, because simply we don't know enough we didn't know enough yeah. right then and there so we more likely to believe experience to help us versus somebody else who is and now they um they trying to start a, what, a checking account it's um, a wrap it's a wrap after that you so, open up a checking account with so if experience get a checking account and they got credit monitoring they're gonna have a credit card next and nah, that's, 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 that's gonna be that's gonna be that's gonna be easy to verify your information if they have all your information based off of your banking their banking data they're yeah. gonna have your address they're gonna have your work history i mean they have your data but be having a checking account with them no nah. they can just take your money out of your account mm -hmm. so i mean but you don't think you're gonna default or you know you always yeah. assume you're gonna pay your bills back right y'all yeah. gonna pay y'all bills right yeah so if you think you're going to pay your bills, it, it, it's no harm to sign up for these type of accounts. But um, once you default or can't pay it back, then you're going to be asking them to verify stuff that they already verified and everything. But yeah, um, the number one thing is thinking the credit bureau is going to actually help you. They're actually hurting you. Mm -hmm. and, and sitting with lawyers and listening to their perspective on the things, it's like, do I remove this account or do I sue? <laughs> and I'm like, man, so we've been teaching people how to remove thousands and thousands of accounts. I think we we like the top top account movers in the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we've been helping people, but really we should have been showing people how to get paid too. Paid and, and remove it at the same paid time. Paid and remove it to give people that choice. Yeah. So that's number one. So number two is thinking you have to wait seven years to remove an account. And listening to a lawyer and seeing how they break down a credit report and seeing the different things that they look at is crazy. Because things don't lie or actually match up with the specific dates. And if the specific dates don't match up when it's first delinquent and the things that are happening, <clears throat> I wish I could show you. But if things are not matching up and the first time it was delinquent and it's not reported correctly, that's a violation. And... The lawyer was like, I'm trying to get a, at least 5000 5000 per violation. So if he has multiple, he's trying to do so many things when it comes to um, getting violations from the credit bureaus and then eventually sue them, whatever the case may be, however long that takes. But you really don't have to wait seven years to fix your credit. The reason why is because everything has to be complete and accurate when it comes to your credit report. And once you understand that, you can still get a removed if you if you don't want to go through the litigation process. Because if you look at Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, you're going to see a lot of incorrect information. But most importantly, the information that's within, like the specific things that say last reporting, date of last payment, date of first date, delinquency, um, date, um, date open your actual balance, like the history. There's so much information that's supposed to be reported correctly. If you get your credit reports from annualcreditreport.com, 
And when you look at identity IQ, you're going to see the information. But you don't really have to wait seven years for a account to be removed. You don't have to do that. You can actually start disputing me if you want to or go through the litigation process. So just want to let you know that. Oh, yeah. So it's like 26 different things that has to be correct and accurate. Um, but if you catch it, you can remove it before seven years is what we're saying. So if I look at TransUnion Equifax Experia and those 26 things don't line up, of course there's an error in the credit report. And if they don't fix it, then you can get it removed. That's why. It's or you can old soup. Well, yeah, yes. uh, or you can do the best thing, which is litigate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, after sitting with the lawyers, man, we were like, we got to kind of switch the model up a little bit because, man, waiting seven years for something to come off or waiting about a year. Waiting a year and it, get 10 bands, $5,000 or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a different, it's a mindset shift that uh, you can pretty much make money out of thin air uh, for errors that somebody, credit bureaus, said they were going to take care of us and make sure everything's 100% accurate. Mike, what's the third biggest lie you see when it comes to credit repair? So the third biggest lie is, yeah. even though a debt collector sends you a letter, mm -hmm. they don't even know if you really owe it. Now, I kind of got to break it down, because coming from a credit repair um, standpoint, uh, we, we look for inaccuracies and stuff like that, but after talking to the lawyers, uh, what we found out was they buy debt and big packages yep. of debt, right? So sometimes they may have agreements attached to them and sometimes it's just an Excel spreadsheet. And the Excel spreadsheet says their first name, last name, phone number, email address, yep. may, may, maybe a regular address, right? So they'll have that basic information, they'll send you a letter or they uh, you know email you or put it on your credit report, right? But then in 30 days, they're supposed to contact you within 30 days you're supposed to ask for verification yeah. or validation yeah you're supposed to do ask that both. yeah ask for both and technically once you ask for that they're supposed to send you the, the stuff that's required to actually validate this specific debt and nine times out of ten most people throw that letter like we've been trained to throw it away ignore it don't check it, whatever. But technically, we're supposed to respond back to them so they can respond back to us. And then when we don't do that, guess what? They're going to try to file a lawsuit against us. And that's when we go through that whole rabbit hole of they trying to sue us. And what we should have done was actually respond back to them within the 30 days to actually validate that specific debt. Now, why this, this is the main reason why it's important mm -hmm. is because... Um, he gave us some, the lawyer gave us some statistics. Um, only eight people, 8% 8 of people Man. show up in court, right? If they're being sued for a debt and only 1% of those 8% of people actually have lawyers with them. So just imagine a junk debt buyer buying a bunch of junk debt and they're like, Hey, if they come to court, throw the case away. Yeah. Right. So, so they, 90, they got a 92% chance of winning. <laughs> no. Yeah. It ain't even a it ain't even a chance. <laughs> Don't they go win Ninety eight percent of people ain't gonna come. That's automatic default judgment. Yeah. So looking at it from a lawyer's perspective, just just the simple asking for a validation of the account because you could verify the account. Val the validate means show me a written agreement or something. All the de the details. All so. the details to the case. And man, once we learned that, we was like, okay, so we shouldn't be trying to. Um, saying it's not ours or whatever it's just like hey can you validate this debt can you show me and then once you do that you can actually start saying hey man don't don't communicate with don't me don't right? communicate <laughs> with me no more because you can't even show me the bare minimum documents yeah so i know you can't take me to court number one mm -hmm. now remove this from my credit report because if you can't prove i owe it then you just harassing me at this point yeah so i learned some more stuff. we're gonna be talking about that i learned some more stuff about like some laws change and I didn't even realize. New videos coming out soon. New videos coming out soon. We're gonna break all that down. So it's crazy. All right, so. And what's the fourth biggest lie? Fourth biggest lie? Oh, the fourth biggest lie is thinking you have to, rem think you have to wait to remove your hard inquiries within um, two years, right? So two years they fall off, but technically if they don't have permissible purpose to be on your report, you really don't have to wait those um, two years because all you got to do is just get your credit report from annual credit, not annual credit report, you have to call Expand TransUnion Equifax because they have specific information versus when you go to annualcreditreport.com, 
or if you go strictly um, identity IQ, they don't have like permissible purpose. You have to directly call the credit bureaus. They're gonna send you that um, their let their report, and then you're gonna be able to see under the inquiry section that it's gonna say some of your um, inquiries are gonna have permissible purpose, but a lot of them aren't. And you can actually create a letter saying remove this specific inquiry due to not have a permissible purpose. And man, you can get it removed. Just letting you know. All right, so I think the last one is mm -hmm. uh, removing the account from your report. Yeah. So, I don't know. You, you should have take that one away as the last one. So, removing the account from your report. So, if you if you remove an account from your report, you still have to pay. A lot of people think that by removing it from your report, you don't owe the money. The credit bureaus are nothing but a reporting system. They make money off your information, sell people inquire about your information and they make their money and things like that and report incorrect information however by you removing it off your report you still owe the money even if you remove a student loan off your report you can get it removed based off of specific um violations but you still owe the student loan you still owe that um credit card you still owe those specific accounts however you can create a specific if you want to specific um paying agreement to actually pay that debt off but they're gonna still continue hounding you until you take care of that debt. And we learned a lot. We're gonna have some more videos breaking that down on how you can actually take care of that debt or if they violate your rights and specific things. So if you need help, if you need assistance when it comes to credit repair and you tired of going back and forth with the credit bureaus, hey, we have a link in the description where you can hire a litigation team and we're gonna sue the debt collectors and knock them out and the credit bureaus. Hey man, that's it, peace.